Hey everybody, today is Sunday, December 24th, 2023, Christmas Eve. Hope you all are having a great holiday. Uh, it's been composed with Broad Shoulders Farm in beautiful Halifax County, Virginia, USDA Grow Zone 7. And I am here in the uh, retirement run uh, with the older hens and roosters, um, working today on a project that I started yesterday. I'm cleaning out the barn um, and I'll just do kind of talk about that. Uh, probably be an extended video where I'll add different footage throughout the day as I make more progress. Um, and I'll also talk about um, some of the changes that I've made or just update some of the stuff going on here. So if you're into that sort of thing, that's what's coming up next. I'll talk about where and how I keep all my retirees. I'll flip the camera around and we'll get going. If you find anything that can be reused, I was trying to grab it. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm here at the retiree run. Hi, dork. And it's a big mess because I started emptying the barn yesterday, um, but I'm glad to have it emptied out because now I can see and organize it a little bit better and I can get to work on putting all this crap back in there and throwing away all the crap that doesn't belong. Uh, this is a structure I built. I feel like I built this back at the beginning of the pandemic, like 2021 or so. And um, I actually got the slope wrong uh, when I built it and a lot of water actually leaked into the middle of it. I had a really uh, thoughtless gap um, where basically this was a big sag. And so water would come down the front and then drop into the middle. So after a lot of belly aching and some major minor depression about failing so hard on this, I was able to fix it uh, basically about six months ago. I had the front propped up quite a bit to increase the angle and I replaced the shorter boards with shorter boards, these eight foot um, corrugated PVC pieces with, I had some 16 footers that completely spanned that gap you can still see some of the swag in there, unfortunately, but you know, these are 16 foot pine beams. Um, and I added another one here. So there's two just to kind of get that up a bit. And I added purlins. They're not going in the right, anyhow, if I had this to do over, lots of changes would happen. And you can see here now also where the overlap is. Um, there's much less chance of the water coming back so anyhow so that was a big improvement the purpose of this barn is to store hay the hay that right now stays out in this unused driveway uh in a big stack over there but i want to bring all that barn into sorry i want to bring all that hay into the barn so that's hopefully at least part of what's going to happen today i'm going to set up pallets on this side and i can stack you know the hay bales probably three or four high depending on what i want to do I'm not looking forward to in the summer this becoming like Snake Haven 101. Um, but uh, I mean, the snakes have got to have their haven somewhere. Uh, rooting through that pile is just as problematic. So anyhow, now it'll be over here. I did hang up some lights last night. They're not necessary, but they just make things a little uh, nicer. It's a solar strand. I got some for the geese uh, in the waterfowl house, I don't know, two or three months ago. And I really like it. So it's the exact same one. I'm hoping it gets enough light here. Um, I do have some thinning that I wanna do on these volunteer pecans here. Um, and I'll work on that over time. Um, so let me work on cleaning some of this stuff up. I'll t turn the camera off and we'll add another update to this in a little bit. Um, and I'll go through kind of what's planted in these beds. Uh, when I come back, I'll probably wanna take a break here, mid project at some point. For those of you who watch the um, video uh, the reel that I put up about feeding extra um, scrambled eggs to cross that's cross right there he's been sitting on his haunches a lot lately so I'm not sure what's up with that but I am making sure that he's getting lots of feed he's a cross beak cross hey buddy what's going on huh hi okay lots of stuff to clean up um this area is i don't know it's probably 90 or 80 or 100 feet maybe more by 30 or 40. um it's the retirement run we don't process our birds so uh as they age out of being really productive layers um they move over here and this is where they live 
Uh, a lot of this is modeled on what um, Sasha and Sean uh, Dambrowski do uh, at Edible Acres, which I talk about in this channel all the time. Um, but I've got some beds here. They've got their own greenhouse. I put our family greenhouse here. Um, hi, Legs. Hi, baby. Gosh, Legs has been with us from the beginning. She has a deformed leg, so that's why she's hobbling like that. But yeah, just, I mean, a huge mess in here. I got to get it cleaned up. Got to get it organized. Um, and as that happens, I'll be a lot more eager to share it. By the way, this is the real uh, coop for the retirees. This is their hen house proper where they're all supposed to hang out, but about half of them stay in the barn and the other half actually come here at night. So by working on closing up the sides of the barn and getting rid of the roosting space on the side, which they have taken advantage of since I put this structure up, uh, I'm hoping that that will help drive more of them into their proper coop. Yeah, lots of them spend their nights on here. And up until yesterday, ha, they spent them there. But I've got this silage tarp that I put up. <clears throat> I've stopped using silage tarps for occultation in the garden for like smothering out crops. I'm worried about the plastic, uh, microplastic migration and uptake in the plants, which apparently is, is a pretty real thing. So I didn't want to just throw the silage tarp out. So what I've been doing, I tried to think of a clever use of it or at least a use for it. And what I came up with is in the fall, in the winter, doing it up here as siding with the black side out to absorb heat. And maybe in the summer, I don't know if it's necessary or not, but I can flip it around with the white side out and it'll reflect light. We'll see. Um, who knows? This may only work for a season and then I will wind up throwing this out or I'll Craigslist it or something. But that's where we are right now. I'll, uh, I'll be right back in a little bit and I'll add to this and we'll talk more about what's going on here. I moved the feed cans for the retirees in here as well. It used to be right there so that it was right by the door when I needed to load and unload feed out of the car. It's more likely now that I would be um, warehousing feed inside this structure. So why not go ahead and move them in? And also trying to eliminate a problem. I have a tendency to leave the lids off of cans in various flocks. Every flock group has their own can. Uh, the Bantams share one with the laying flock. Uh, the Merrick's flock has their own can. The, uh, Polt the waterfowl have their own can. Um, the uh, roosters and the rooster run have their own can. And it's usually a grain and feed, one in each. But I have a tendency to leave the lids off of these because in every group I have some beta males or some timid hens who won't feel comfortable eating out of the many, many bowls that I put in every run. There is no run that has just one bowl. They all have at least two and some of them have as many as six. So I try to put out lots of bowls so that no one can really be bullied and kept away from the food. But that being said, I still have some who don't make it in for better for worse. Like for instance, you know, he was right here sending himself dork. There he is. He's heading out now to sun himself. That's Dork. He's been with me from the beginning. He's a very timid, dorking rooster, and now he's five, and he's, uh, anyway, he's a sweet little guy, but he rarely eats out of the bowls that everybody else does. However, if I leave the cans open, he hops in, he has his modest repast, and sometimes he'll even sleep in there. Um, but on days when I forget or I don't look at the weather and it rains overnight or it rains and I can't get here or something, I can run the risk of the feed getting wet and ruined. And it's happened before. So having it under here is just much better for this group. Also, I'm hoping to be, like I said, warehousing feed in here too. So, But now that I've moved those cans, here's the... Oh, it's fun for the chickens, but I always feel bad about it. There's almost always like a mouse holocaust that comes after this, but I really can't have the mice. I shouldn't have the mice in here. They spread disease and they uh, will eat the feed. Um, so I regret doing this, but I'm gonna pull this up if I can. Now wood like this, I'm just gonna take it straight to the burn pile. I can try and repurpose this, but let's try this again. Chick, 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 chick. Okay, there we go. Uh. Chick, 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 chick. 
Oh, nobody under here. Well, what do you know? All right, girls, sorry. <laughs> I moved a pallet yesterday and there were like, I don't know, half a dozen mice and when I pulled it off and then very shortly thereafter, there were not half a dozen mice. But anyhow, the girls will be interested here that I pull this out and they'll flatten all this out for me and they'll get any little microbiota in there that they want. All right, back to it. All right, so <clears throat> I got some pallets brought in here. Drag those in. They were kind of fun. I flipped them over. <clears throat> they came from over there. And um, they've been there for probably at least a year, maybe more. But anyhow, I flipped them over and they were covered in pill bugs. So I dragged them over here. I uploaded a couple shorts onto YouTube if you want to see how the chickens reacted to the pill bug palooza. But um, now these are here. I think I'll go ahead and cut the material for the siding next. And then... I will start dragging the, uh, well, wheelbarrowing <clears throat> the um, hay bales over here. Uh, I gotta clear out the wheelbarrow first though. A bunch of just junk, junk wood, like what I got from over there, which by the way, that spot is very rich. I'm probably gonna put like an elderberry there or something. I think that would do well. But um, <clears throat> I'll drag this over to the burn pile, which I'll probably get started today. I, uh, I know we had some rain last week and the county lifted the burn ban. So today's as good a day as any to get a big bonfire going. All right, stay tuned. As long as I'm talking about burning stuff, of course I brought all this over and I've had parts of this stage for a while, the bulk of it, but it's good to get the burn going. Start to clear out the Japanese honeysuckle. This side that you're looking at is what this side right here, winter quarters, what it used to look like. So. It can be done, just gotta do it. I also took the opportunity to bring a few bodies out of the freezer and consign them to the flame. Uh, it was a rough year this year for uh, some of my favorite birds, but um, I had three little bodies here. It's hard to bury lost crew members here on the farm because they get dug up either by Ellis or possum or other critters. So it's best to just burn them. And uh, I try to memorialize them with a plant or a plaque or something like that. But um, so yeah, so rest in power, Java the Hut, Little Sweet, and Chica. There's certainly a lot of other stuff I wanna thin out between these volunteer pecans that are, I say, problematic. But I think today's the day I'm gonna go ahead and get this chunk down, see if I can do it without damaging the fence as long as I'm working here in the retirement run. <clears throat> All right, I got the eastern side of the uh, silage tarp up. Uh, it's not super tight. And it's only stapled right now, but I'm gonna come back and batten it because of course it needs to be ready to sustain <clears throat> or bear up to um, the winds over the winter. They've just got a little bit left to do now to get the back and that last little side. So it's coming along. All right, more to come. All right, so <clears throat> I've got the siding up on this side and I've got, uh, I had a, a family friend come who is helping um, today and we got a nice row of hay bales in here and I've started battening down the silage tarp got in a couple places so that when the wind picks up here as we get further into winter this will still be secure and I went ahead and planted a, um, a really nice kusa dogwood tree that I like. Uh, these can handle shade and not that this is a super shady spot, but also they produce a really nice edible um, fruit that looks kind of like a red version of the Death Star. They're really cool and uh, I like the flavor. It's pretty crazy and unusual, but um, I've got one here and I've got one planted also like over there nearby, but um, continuing to clean out, but things are going pretty well. Um, 
I am happy with the progress that I've made today. I did a couple other kind of smaller projects around the farm today too, but uh, not bad for a productive Christmas Eve. Um, and I think I already talked about the lights that we got up and these should be coming on here soon. Maybe that'll be the closing picture. But wherever you are, whatever you're up to, I hope that you and those you care for are happy, healthy, and well. I hope you have a very fantastic Christmas Eve, and I will see you folks later. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. There we go. Some lights. Now it'll be easier for Santa to find them.